Yeah, no, it was absolutely fantastic. So as a practicing architect, uh, I guess I feel very energized by the ideas that you have, so, you know, not just at the city scale, but also down uh, looking at the edges of buildings. In your book, you comment about the need for the detail on the edges of buildings so that people can people can be protected. Um, so I'll go away, certainly, and sort of have a think about what we do in terms of making our buildings you know, livable, accessible for people. Uh, we have 10, 15 minutes for questions. Uh, so I would invite people in the audience to uh, uh, come and uh, ask Young. Uh, young Peter Mark, though, you've seen City Walk. I mean, we were ahead of our time having a wonderful pedestrian area. What can we do to make it as exciting as the streets we've seen there? Because the infrastructure's there, people bike, cycle, you've got beautiful trees. How can we make it like this? It is not rocket science at all. I, I mentioned something um, that is that in, we found in all these situations where I've been working that we try to get start with having what we call um, a base study, a, a data about how it is being used, because then you can start to speculate about how it could be improved. And also in such a study, you find out what is working and what is not and what is missing. And then you can start to make a policy saying five years from now we will be here or there. Copenhagen is a little bit unique because they've been hurting for 50 years and they really understand it now. The city has a department for pedestrians and public life and they check what is going on every second year and produce what is called the livability uh, account. It's in English also and it's on the website. Um, so it is not rocket science, it is hard work, it may be in small installments. We can not always have a Moscow mayor to push things. But we, we've seen in Melbourne wonders have been made, we've seen in Fremantle wonders have been made, in Perth quite a few things have been made. Um, so it can be done, and that is my message, it can be done. And it's being done all over the world by now, because it's been realized that <clears throat> we must make good cities for people, and we must address the climate and the health in the same operation. Yep. Just wondering if there's a correlation or a re relativity between. Would, would you speak uh, loud and precise? Sorry. Because there's some. Okay. Yeah, just wondering if there's a correlation or relativity. <coughs> Relativity between population size and density, and the success in you know, quality and livability success. Not at all. Not at all. I, I know of little villages of 200 people who have a roaring life, and I know of cities of 8 million who doesn't. Uh, so um, it is about what the kind of, of habits you get and the kind of opportunities you have been given over time or by, from history which, uh, but I should say one thing, that it's much easier to clean up in an old city which had been invaded by motor cars and where the spaces are there and it's just waiting for you to give more space for people. Uh, it's more hard in a city, maybe like this one, which was made in a transition period where the planners were influenced by the, the young automobile industry and uh, still have their trends in mind, but made everything, I think everything in Canberra, which is hard to work with, they are about 50% oversized, all the streets and all the everything. Um, that means that you have much more to maintain and you need um, to be more careful with your people policy. It's like having a party in too many uh, rooms. I would always say to have a good party, bring all the people out in the kitchen and make sure the kitchen is rather small. Um, if you have the party in three rooms with 50 people, you have to work harder. But it can be done. Hi, I'm Barbara Norman. I'm economic benefits and 
you know, like every place, we need to convince our treasurers that these investments in public place are, are worthwhile. So I'm interested in some of the experience by the retailers and the traders that front, used to front the roads where cars used to be, but now are pedestrianised places. You don't have to convince me, but we still have to mount the arguments here. <clears throat> there is by now a fantastic amount of evidence about um, that urban quality is good for the economy of the city and the retailers. And if I should say something, in this time where we have this concentration of trade in bigger shopping malls and supermarkets and we have the internet trade also as a, cha as a challenge and as a threat to the retailers, it is even more important than everything that we, may, that we work hard to make very attractive urban settings where people would love to come because that would be good for the retailers. Um, if we start to give up and say let them do the internet, um, my point is, I don't think we can live without having hearts in our communities where we can meet. And I think that the, 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 the challenge now is to make better hearts so that people would like more to come and spend their money there or their time there and whatever. So, and we have good evidence, say, in in Broadway, I think they were able to prove that 71% increase in the turnover in the shops was the immediate result of giving people more space. So there is a number of things which is known now uh, about the relationship between um, urban quality and the economy of shops.